I look back on agenting as I think truly one of the the great um, kind of learning experiences of my career. And um, but you have and I do love to sell. I mean, I love to sell. I love negotiating deals. Uh, I love representing actors and I represented writers at the time. And towards the end of my time at Triad, one of my primary territories was Lorimar Television. So I represented a lot of people and made a lot of deals for writers. I remember Paul Kreppel, um, Meredith Baxter. Um, the movies of the movie of the week business was very big, and Lorimar was doing a lot of movies of the week. So I, I was I was I knew a lot of the people at Lorimar. I knew the the um, the casting directors. I knew the business affairs people, um, and I thought. I like that studio. I like the the people that work there. And all of a sudden, I was up for a promotion at Triad. And I thought, you know what? I don't know if I want to do this. Um, I was beginning to hear something about this, about development and the what development was. And I was very intrigued by that. Um, and as much as I loved agenting, and I did, I really enjoyed it and I have great respect for agents, I thought this development thing sounds pretty interesting because part of the problem is when you're an agent and you've done your deal and your client is working, you're out of it. You're done. It's over. And I would get very involved in the scripts and packaging a piece of material with the actor. And then all of a sudden, again, once you set up that project, you're, you're, it's done. You're, it's time to move on. And I, I had trouble, (laughs) I had trouble separating. And I, I'd heard about development and I heard about this one job in particular at Lorimar Television, um, in movies and miniseries, which that was what I was, I was doing a lot of work in movies and miniseries. And I thought, you know, let me, you know, let me just stick my toe in here. Let me see what, what this is really all about. And, um, as fate would have it, there was a particular job opening up because the woman who was doing the job um, had was leaving to go to work at CBS in movies and miniseries. So I heard about this job, and um, I thought, I think I'd like that. I think I'd like to do that. So that's what kind of prompted the move to, uh, to Lorimar. I have never been one to stand idly by. It's not in my nature. And if I see something and I think I, I'm, I'm, I think it's an opportunity, um, I will go for it whole hog. I, so, um, I had heard that Leslie Moonves was the person who was going to be hiring. Um, and I called my boss. I, at the time, I was still a triad. I called John Kimball, and I said, will you help me get this job? I said, will you help me get this interview with Leslie? Um, and Barbara Miller, may she rest in peace, who was truly one of the most gifted casting uh Uh, casting executives in in the business. Um, I knew Barbara, and I knew Barbara was very close to Leslie, so I called Barbara. I called John Kimball, and I said, just just get me in there to meet him. I said, I think, I know I'm right for it. I knew his background. I knew he came from the theater. I knew he was an actor. He'd worked in New York off-Broadway and Broadway at the time, and I, I said, we had a lot of similarities in our background. I said, I know. I think I can really, I think I can nail this. So, um, Barbara called, Barbara Miller called, my boss called, um, and then I, I strategically made some calls to other producers who had deals at Lorimar, some uh, Meredith Baxter um, I represented at the time. I asked her to make a call. So all of a sudden, Leslie started getting these calls, and I, I got my interview. And I went in to interview with Les, who was the either the executive vice president of creative affairs at the time. He had not been made president of Laura Mariette. But um, I went in and literally I can, I, I know exact, I can tell you to this day what I was wearing. Um, I remember the layout of his office. Um, Lorimar was still over at Culver Studios at the time they had moved over to the Valley yet to Warner Brothers. Um, and I just knew that this was something I could do. 
Uh, and I, when I went in for that interview, I, sit, I was sitting outside his office, and I said, this is the most important audition of your life. And, and, and I went in, and in my mind, I thought to myself, I am not going to stop talking until I feel like I have this job. And I just started talking. And at one point, I said, I, I, I could see that he had made a decision. I could see in his eyes that he made a decision. And, I, and, I, and maybe I was reading into this, but I really felt like... I knew at that moment he had hired me. And so I began to back off. We went over all the things we had in common, all the people I represented, that I love to sell, that I come from the theater, all of these things. These were you know, points we had in common. And I just felt, oh, my God, this is that moment. Um, and afterwards, I wanted to really seal the deal. And I, I called every single person in Hollywood who knew Leslie Moonves and had them call him. And I think at one point he said, you know, if another person calls me to say, to tell me to hire you, I will not hire you. But um, it was, uh, uh, you know, you just, you have to, that's what you do. That's, I was agenting for myself. Um, and then I did get that job.